I am Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we are here with two-time Oscar winner Kazuhiro, the prosthetic makeup designer on Netflix's Maestro. And first thing first, you were just nominated at the Makeup Artist and Hairstylist Guild Awards this week. Uh, tell us, what's your reaction to that big news? Um, it's a great honor because it's a uh, Guild Award is basically, you know, made up with a co-worker and the makeup artist so it's a great honor to mm. be you know selected by the uh, member of the union and your job on maestro is to physically transform bradley cooper into american composer leonard bernstein and i'm curious what is step one for you when you take on a new project as challenging as this yes uh so basically <laughs> I, I would start from a meeting with the actor, this guy's Bradley, and I uh, read the script. And and the uh, you know, important part was uh, uh, from a script, I uh, had to divide in uh, ages because he went through a 25 to 71 years old. <clears throat> and then I did a 3D scan and a live cast of Bradley. And uh, I made a physical copy of him to sculpt and design the makeup on. Mm. That was a start, yeah. And, I mean, you're right. He does age quite a bit throughout the movie from being a young man to being quite old. Um, do you ever worry about too much makeup on the face kind of restricting an actor's expressions or their movements? And how do you strike that balance between getting the right amount? Yes, it's... Uh, yes, of course... I, I always worry about that. And, uh, you know, like I said, when, okay, like, uh, so he is 49. He had a just birthday today. And mm -hmm. so when we met first time was uh, 47. And so to be a 71, there's a lots of change happens. And so I had to put that on his face to make the difference. And of course, you know, around his age and a little bit older, uh, we had to do a likeness makeup on him to make him look like a Leonard Bernstein. And I always try to uh, study both face and, uh, you know, learn from what the difference between Lenny and Bradley. And as you said, like I, I, I usually, you know, try to keep it minimum uh, of a prosthetic to mm -hmm. to decide what will be the most effective and at the same time uh you know we need to understand the anatomy of the face and how it moves and uh, w how the his face will work with a prosthetic and and the other part is to make the prosthetic as soft as possible so it will be easier for him to move the face move his mm -hmm. face and uh <clears throat> So that all the combination of everything and decide uh, the design of the makeup on each stages. And you, you mentioned likeness makeup. Do you basically have the picture of Leonard and then the picture of Bradley and decide, you know, where the differences are, where the similarities are? How does that yes. work? Yes. And uh, so, uh, so at the beginning of the designing, I collected a photograph of him because he was really well documented because I could get uh, like over like a 1600 photographs and I got the DVD and videos and books and and compare, it looks like a separate on the five different stages of the age and uh, compare and study. And at the same time, like, a, a, you know, as we talked about, the amount of the prosthetic import is important. And to make it make Bradley exactly look like Lenny, I can just start to add more stuff. But at the same time, we have to decide where to stop. And so as, as he ages, so he had to be like a 25. So like a, people's like a lip the amount of the lip, like a fullness of the lip changes too. So he had a lip piece at the beginning and the, that get start to get thinner as he get older. And the, also adding age will 
adding a cheeks and the uh, Nazarbia fold and the, you know, like a jawline start to sag and everything like that. So just a combination of the all uh, different element of the design, I have mm. to decide, yeah. And what is it made of? What is the the makeup that you use for the for the cheeks, for example? Yes, it's a whole all prosthetic was made out of a, a platinum cured uh, silicone, so very like a squishy, like a soft rub uh, silicone rubber. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like skin, or if you feel it, can you feel? Oh, this is this feels different. <laughs> it's it's quite. Close to skin, not exactly because it's so complicated. Like a like a skin on the face and body is so complicated because so many layers. But we cannot reproduce that. But the silicone itself is very soft, and many times, like a impression I got from people who is touching it, it's feel like a skin, but it doesn't have a body temperature. You know, mm. so it's, <laughs> that's I I hear from many people. So it's like a dead zombie skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, yes. Uh, well, your two Academy Award wins came for your work on Bombshell and Darkest Hour, in which you turned Charlize Theron into Megyn Kelly and Gary Oldman into Winston Churchill, among others. Um, mm. And you've sort of become the go-to artist in Hollywood for physically transforming actors into famous figures. How did that happen? How did this come to be that that you're the, the guy everyone wants? Hmm. The uh wow, well, <laughs> the uh so since I was child, uh I was reading uh I kind of obsessed uh, about the face, human face because it's uh I'm I was an introvert and I always had a fear about the people because uh, my childhood wasn't that good <laughs> and uh, and so I always studied uh, what's going on underneath you know, like what, uh, in the psyche of the people. And uh, so try to study that and uh, that kind of connected with, uh, doing a makeup. And I always wanted to do a character makeup. And uh, my big inspiration was, uh, Dick Smith and Rick Baker. And, uh, is, they are the best special effects makeup artists. And I was really inspired what they were doing. And so I, I was keep uh, trying to do a human subject and and you know at the before darkest hour i tried to get the job like that but it was difficult and uh, i went into like a kind of retirement from film project for a while and i was doing a fine art and so the great thing was uh gary oldman came to me about the darkest hour to do a design of uh, Winston Churchill makeup and that, that was the start and uh, so it was a good thing because that's something I wanted to do for a long time and also like a filmmaker realized or actors realized okay this is another way to tell the story and mm -hmm. so I think that's I think that that's how I keep doing that kind of makeup and uh, you worked on the 2012 film, The Place Beyond the Pines, with with Bradley Cooper. Is that how you guys met? And is that no, how no, no, I no, no. I didn't work with him. That I didn't work on that film. Actually, I only helped to do a live cast on that. And uh, actually, you know, I asked Bradley afterwards after we finished the film. Okay, how how did you decide to hire me? Mm -hmm. And so what he told me was. Uh, when Bradley was working with Guillermo del Toro on uh, uh, Nightmare Alley, and Bradley asked Guillermo who would be the best person to do this. And so Guillermo said uh, to Bradley that uh, Kazu is the only one who, who can do it. And I walked Guillermo, I walked with Guillermo uh, on Hellboy, Mm. And uh, we have a same mentor, Dick Smith. Is uh, we were both inspired by Dick Smith, so uh, that's how we get to know Guillermo. So yeah, that's how we were connected. Well, thank you, Guillermo. I'm I'm, I'm so glad he, <laughs> he offered you as, as the as the number one person for this job. Yeah. Um, and before Maestro came out, what did it mean to you when Leonard Bernstein's children 
they came forward and they said they 100% stand behind the makeup work and mm -hmm. specifically the quote, nice big nose that their father was known for. That must have been a special moment to have their support. Yes, it's, uh, you know, it's it was a quite, <laughs> I don't know if I can say I'm fortunate, but the first image came out, people started to talk about the nose. And of course, it's kind of obvious thing, the difference between like a, uh, makeup and uh, Bradley himself and uh, people were talking about the the nose uh, I don't know some people say the nose gate or something like that mm -hmm. but uh, you know it's it's uh, basically what we're doing is we just wanted to talk about the story authentic way and uh, Lenny Leonard Bernstein is really iconic person, as you can see, like he was so documented, so documented very well. And uh, I, I'm glad that uh, uh, Lenny's family uh, said that comment uh, officially because uh, it was a great help. And of course, I, I worry about it because people, how some people are reacted. And, but most of the people, they really, enjoyed it uh so it was really meaningful and they, they're a great family actually because uh i get to know them after film was finished and um <clears throat> it was uh because we had to go to film festival because actor wasn't available because of a strike mm -hmm. and they uh um they were such a sweet great family and uh and the great thing is like i, I also met so many people who knew uh, Lenny in person and uh, they they told me that uh this looks exactly like Lenny so mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, <laughs> you know great and your team uh, doesn't just work on the face right it's also the neck and the arms and the hands that need to be made up can mm -hmm. you talk about that process at all yes it's uh so when he was the youngest stage like uh he had a nose and lips and chin and the uh, body was the same uh, as he as uh, Bradley and they were, and we had to put the wig on him to make him look younger too and as he get older uh, so there was five stages there was five stages and from uh, uh, fourth stage uh, we gave him a belly because you know, as if people get older, the belly starts to <laughs> get out larger, and uh, and some old age people on their hand, and uh, on the old age stage, he had the bo full body suits because it's uh, we had to change the posture, and the arm have to be get older, and uh, of course, like a third and fourth stage, he had the neck piece on, because we you know we start to see. Uh, big difference. It started to, start to sag and the neck started to change. And all this stage, we had to cover a whole arm uh, with the hair punched in. And uh, and the one scene he did, he his shirt was open, so we had to recreate a skin on top of it. Like a, we call undersuits. Undersuits only worn under the costume so we don't see the skin but uh, in the particular scene his shirt was open so we had to create a uh, skin on top of it so it will make look you know make him look like a he his skin is exposed mm. yeah and for that final stage how many hours would you say bradley was sitting in the in the makeup chair to get it to get everything perfect yes uh so it was a total of close to five hours so and uh, yeah it takes a long time because he's covered with uh, 14 pieces on the head and the arm was fully covered and he had to put the body suits and we had to put the wig on and so it's a long process and it's it's quite you know like a hard day because uh for that the oldest stage we our call time is usually like a one or two o'clock in the morning and we start the makeup and Bradley wanted makeup to be done before the crew call because he wanted to show up as a Lenny on set. And so uh, that was, you know, quite tough days. And um, then he goes goes to set and set up the filming 
uh, shooting for that day, and we start filming like a few days, a, a few years, a few hours after that, after we finished the makeup. And Bradley, uh, besides being the actor, he's also the producer and the writer and the director. And <laughs> I'm curious, what's something you learned about him on this project that maybe surprised you that you didn't know about him before? Oh, <laughs> It was uh, more like uh, it was a, a lots of uh, present present supplies. It's like uh, he's a, such an amazing person, hum, amazing human being, and I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't sure what he will be like, actual as a person, other than what I saw on film as an actor. And he's really open, honest, and uh, he he's a really great communicator too and so after i started like a pre-production like maybe in a three month in i told him i feel like i've known you like 10 years because he was very honest and open and so we it's a you know like a uh, movie making is a collaborative job so we have to communicate really well and so the the other thing was like uh he well he he said that you know, many times because he he's a furious, you know, when he was working on this project, and uh, at the same time, that means it it's almost like uh, he let us be free to make a mistake and learn from it, and uh, keep improving every day, and uh, that connection and uh, work relationship really helped us to raise the bar. Each department, every department is, and uh, um. It, it was a kind of great gift. And uh, I think it's, I don't know how he did it because he had so much task on in his hand to take care of everything, but he never complained about being in a chair for many hours. And uh, we really actually kind of enjoyed that process together. It was, a gr it was great. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I would say like a best, experience I had in my whole entire career, I, I would say, you know. Well, before we go, I'm, I'm curious, what would you say is the most impressive makeup job you've ever seen on a film? Not one you've worked on, but as a viewer, maybe something that's stuck with you since you were younger. Is, is there anything that comes to mind? Mm. <laughs> Just one? <laughs> as many as you want. <laughs> okay. So uh, my mentor, not actually really worked with him, but uh, what I learned a lot from him was uh, Dick Smith, and uh, his his career, uh, you know, like it was amazing. And he's a makeup, he's a, the best, one of the best makeup artists, you know, like Amadeus and and Exorcist, and the uh, uh, Rick Baker was my boss for a while. And uh, his makeup, you know, like a Nazi professor and American wealth in London, yeah. and both 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 of them are like uh, my uh, my biggest inspiration when to become a makeup artist. Mm. Yeah, and the rest is history. <laughs> Well, uh, congrats on all of your success and best of luck at the Makeup Guild Awards coming up. And then, of course, the Oscars a little bit later this season. Thank you mm -hmm. for chatting with us today. All right. Thank you very much, Marcus. 